Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is the professor and thank you for joining me today and this uh, uh, a special um, uh, uh, version of the professor. Today we're going to talk about the new multi-billion, okay? This is $2 billion class action lawsuit filed by the Morris Legal Law Firm, uh, multi-state law firm, uh, with headquarters in Florida, uh, yesterday, February 6, I believe, the uh, law firm filed a $2 billion lawsuit, uh, Ford lawsuit against Novatech, all the different Novatech companies. You could see a copy of the defendant on, uh, on the screen. And of course, some of this defendant also happened to be um, you know, individual, for example, uh, somebody like a uh, Dr. Martin Jean, uh, Martin Jean Zizi, uh, Francis Seron, and, and, and a whole bunch of other people. Now, I have read the 55 page pages lawsuit. It is very detailed about the what Cynthia Petion and her husband, Eddie Petion, and uh, a whole bunch of other people who were either working as promoters or as uh, senior directors or directors, all of these people were actually helping Cynthia Petio and her husband committed this fraud. So the question is whether how much they knew that about the, um, the Ponzi scheme. And quite frankly, uh, initially, I, I thought that this was mainly in the United States and Canada and find out that the fraud extended to Africa, at least part of Africa, South Africa, Kenya, uh, and as well as Brazil, Chile, uh, because I have um, been um, looking at the response that people, um, how people responded to this class action lawsuit and realized that there were people from all over the world that have been uh, victimized by this gigantic fraud. So certainly this is a big case. The case was filed in the uh, Southern, in the Federal District Court for the Southern District of New York, which is, uh, 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 which is kind of an interesting, one of the most famous federal uh, district court in the country. They've seen their fair share of great big cases. So this is a $2 billion case. So what does it mean for all the defendants? What does it mean for you as uh, investors? Of, uh, the best thing you can do is to uh, join the lawsuit, to be part of it. Certainly, I'm sure there are millions of people all over the world who actually have invested in Emini FX because Emini, I mean, I'm sorry, who have invested in, uh, in Novatech because Novatech has been around for a good four years, uh, whereas Emini FX was just for a little bit, a little bit about a year or so. So, uh, if you are an investor, if you did invest in Novatech, uh, there is um, the law firm, as I've learned, have a website, and that uh, I'm going to show you the website here. And you can actually go to the website. You see the uh, the name of the website, willmoyslaw.com. And then when you go to the website, you're going to scroll down, okay, where it says Novatech. And then once you click on Novatech, you'll be able to fill out your information, your name, address, telephone numbers, email address. And there are some questions about how did you know about Novatech? Who introduced you to Novatech? Who was the team leader for you on Novatech? So once you do that, my understanding is that you will be on the list of people who are part of a class action lawsuit. But normally when somebody files a class action lawsuit or a lawyer files a class action lawsuit, anybody who's affected could be part of the class. But when I read this lawsuit, it's exclude people who were part of the leadership team. What does it mean? It means that if somebody was a team leader, they may not be part of that class action. You know, I mean, I'm not giving legal advice, but based on what I read from the lawsuit, it looks to me that the lawyers sought to um, somewhat uh, not making these people uh, part of the lawsuit, uh, part of the, uh, these people not part of the class. So in other words, somebody like, um, like uh, Cynthia or some of the people that were very close with her, 
these are those are not they will not be members of the class. So anyway, in any event, uh, this lawsuit was filed. It's a gigantic lawsuit, and I think it's a way for um, the investors who have bended together, obviously, to retain a lawyer to file this lawsuit. They're sending a message to the world: you can't uh, defraud people and expect to get away with it. Uh, it's true that nobody knows where Senfia Petro is, where her husband is. Hopefully, the law will will uh, cut up with uh, her uh, with them uh, soon. But for now, nobody knows where they are. But I'm sure that the uh, Cynthia Pitcher and Eddie Pitcher have people still working for them, have people still telling them what's going on. And I'm very sure, I'm very aware that they know about this lawsuit. And uh, certainly, this is a very serious lawsuit. The uh, judge, the federal judge who is assigned to uh, the lawsuit, Mullins versus uh, Novatech is a former federal prosecutor here in, um, in the Southern District of New York. He has experience with uh, dealing, prosecuting uh, this type of white collar crime. So he would understand very clearly how to handle the case. So the plaintiffs, uh, the plaintiffs are lucky, uh, hopefully to find a judge who have experience in this. So um, needless to say that there have been uh, a huge positive response by people looking for a way to make their voices heard. And I know it's hard when you have 50, 60, 100, two, three hundred thousand dollars uh, invested in something that you thought was going to make you money and find out that it's a, it's a Ponzi scheme. It's kind of very disappointing. And I totally understand that. So if you are an investor, the best thing you could do right now is to register on the website and to be part of, of it. Of course, if you know other investors, you may wanna tell them to do the same thing because it's, you know, it, it's important. Um, the other thing I wanna talk to you about today is the promoters. There are people that uh, I have discovered through my research who have been uh, what we call a serial promoter of Ponzi scheme. In other words, they go from one Ponzi scheme to another. They, they All their life, that's what they do, promoting Ponzi scheme. And in this complaint, they have some people who actually were uh, part, uh, part of the Ponzi scheme. In fact, they promoted the Ponzi scheme. And these are people that we're gonna talk about. I'm certainly going to take, I'm gonna look at the complaint and take each defendant one by one and talk about them and talk about what their involvement have been and so on and so forth. So it's kind of give you an idea really how widespread this is because there are people from all over the United States that I just find out uh, who were promoting uh, Novatech. Uh, they held meetings on Zoom. They uh, had something called Novatech University where they were uh, holding classes uh, every weekend to teach people, to talk to people about Novatech. In fact, uh, people doing my investigation have told me that there were meetings in Pennsylvania and New Jersey and Florida and, and different places where they were pressured to uh, look for other people. In other words, to look for other people to invest to the extent that people were told that they, they're not gonna be able to be paid if they don't get other people. So that doesn't sound like an investment to me. And now suddenly, if somebody told me this, the first thing I would say is, what do you mean uh, that I have to, I'm not working for you. What do you mean I have to get other people in order to get paid if I invest my own money? So, but that's how a Ponzi scheme work, guys. The Ponzi scheme always need people to bring money so that the uh, the older investors can be paid with money from the new investors or the newer investors. So I think that uh, the world knows now in detail what uh, um, Cynthia Patreon, AD Patreon, and, and uh, some of the other co-conspirators uh, have done with regard to this case. And hopefully the FBI will get a copy of the complaint. It's very detailed in terms of uh, the investigation that the law firm conducted. I am going to try to see if I can get the lawyer in the case to come to the professor to speak a little bit about the case, uh, what he's trying to do, and how do we get all of this money back? Because 
quite frankly, um, remember the case of Emily FX. Uh, Eddie Allison was arrested. The government uh, appointed a receiver. And the receiver, of course, was negotiating, talking to the defendant to try to look at the assets. They have located some asset to the tune of $156 million. But in the case of, of Novatech, uh, Cynthia Patreon has raised over $2 billion, okay, with a B, $2 billion. And in the span of four years, they have she has raised that money. And the money is obviously sitting somewhere, at least if not, you know, most of that money is sitting somewhere in some account and some crypto account in Europe, because my understanding is what people were doing is uh, buying crypto and send that crypto to um, to Cynthia and his and her cohorts there, and so that money, that money in crypto, that crypto equivalent of two billion is sitting somewhere. So the question is, um, the lawsuit it's a it's a marvelous step. It's a great step. Uh, in fact, I applauded the uh, the investors of Novatech for filing that lawsuit quickly and early. Because what that would do is preserve their position, preserve their right as investor was saying, look, whatever asset that Novatech has, that asset belongs to us. So the question now is to locate the asset. The best way to find the asset is obviously when the person gets arrested and the person is facing, I don't know, 30 years, 20 years in prison. They don't want to go to prison for that long. So they're going to try to negotiate return of that that asset or some of that asset for a lesser prison sentence to lessen their prison sentence, just like A.D. Alexson did in the case of Emini FX. Now, in the case of Novatech, um, it would make sense for the attorneys then to send a copy of the complaint to the FBI and actually to make a formal complaint to the FBI on behalf of the named plaintiffs or plaintiff. And then the FBI certainly would, would investigate, but they have to find Cynthia Patreon, they have to find Eddie Patreon. So hopefully both Eddie and Cynthia will get caught soon. Once that happened, now uh, that lawsuit would have already been there, that lawsuit would have already been established and position would have already been taken. And then now once they get arrested, the lawyers and the lawsuit could certainly speak to whoever the judge is and say, hey, we got this lawsuit here. Whatever asset collected belong to the class. Let's try to appoint a receiver or somebody to try to um, so that we can locate the asset. But understand that, guys, this is not this is not something that is going to happen tomorrow. This is not something that's going to happen next week. Um, it might take a while for the FBI to locate. Cynthia and Eddie. Uh, and, and then I don't know how long it would take. I could give you an example. For example, there was another case, similar case, even though the money was a lot less, $150 million. And this guy collected that money from people in the United States and then skipped to, to Dubai, where he was living with his Brazilian wife. And he actually was traveling from Brazil to Dubai, make a stop in Miami. And then Homeland Security get a hold of him and they turn him over to the FBI. He's now incarcerated uh, for uh, defrauding investors of $150 million. So $150 million is a lot less than $2 billion. So I'm sure that there's a lot more money and there's a lot more time that both Eddie, uh, not just Eddie Pichon and Cynthia Pichon, they're like the wing leader. They're the one who had the conceptions, but the people who help Eddie Alexson, I'm um, sorry, the people who help uh, Eddie uh, Patreon and Cynthia Patreon to uh, uh, to defraud people, they're part of the crime, they're part of the same ring. So these people may uh, probably, will probably be arrested as well because I knew that in New York, there were several people, uh, well-regarded people and several community, including uh, the Haitian community, my community, there were people promoting uh, uh, promoting Novatech, people like Franz Ciceron, 
whose picture you see here together with uh, Dr. Zizi and Pastor Bob St. Louis, those guys, they bend it together to hold meetings every weekend and have they've gone to churches uh, in, in, in New York trying to recruit people for Novatech. So the question is, I mean, these guys are not stupid. They're not dumb. They're not uneducated people. You're talking about Dr. ZZ, who's a PhD or a medical doctor, I don't know. But those are people with some type of education who had, you know, who's been around, who understand how the markets work, who understand finances. For them to promote that type of uh, company like Novatech and then convince people to invest, it would be, you know, uh, kind of interest. I mean, it would be almost unbelievable for me, for these guys to come and say, well, we we didn't know if he was a fraud. We didn't know he was a Ponzi scheme. We don't know what was going on. I think a lot of the promoters uh, who were out there on televisions or on uh, social media platform uh, trying promoting this also bears great responsibility. And I think the law is going to deal with them very harshly. I think a lot of these people are going to end up bankrupt. If not, they end up in prison. They're going to end up bankrupt because they knew this was a Ponzi scheme. They knew it was a Ponzi scheme because they knew there was no way you can guarantee someone 3% every day or 3% a week, 3% a week on, uh, on the type of investment when nobody really knew what the investment was. That's number one. Number two, there were promoters who were telling people that Novatech was a licensed hedge fund manager. I have the video of people saying that, okay? For example, uh, it would be interesting. I want you guys to listen to this part of a video that this guy basically was saying. Okay, I want you to listen to that part of the video. And this is a meeting that this promoter had a Zoom call on uh, on basically online. And, and, and I found this video to my research, actually a good uh, friend of mine uh, and another investigator that helps with this case found this video. And I want you to watch it for a minute, the introduction and listen to this guy talking about m and &E and listen to what the guy said as he was trying to introduce the other, he said, this is my co-conspirator. Doesn't that tell you something, guys? Listen, you know, and I'll be right back. All right, everybody. Thank you for coming and being with us. Um, this is, uh, my name is Alan Mullins. We have uh, Rick Watson on here as well. Uh, he's he's one of my co-conspirators on here. And we appreciate everybody being here. It's good to see each one of you. We've got people from all over the country and even from the Philippines uh, here already tonight. Looking forward to a, a great time. We have... Uh, one of my friends and a mentor of mine, a uh, seven-figure earner with uh, network marketing companies. His name is uh, Scott. Um, oh, my gosh. Whitney. Uh, Scott Whitney. Hi. Thank you very much, Scott. Appreciate that. And uh, he held up a sign real fast. Whitney, Whitney. It was uh, right. So, uh, we appreciate Scott being here. Uh, he actually is the one that brought me into uh, Novatech and look forward to hearing everything he's got to say. This guy knows what he's talking about. Okay, guys, so you've heard the guy, you've heard what he said, and you've heard when he said he wanted to introduce uh, this guy, and he said, this is my co-conspirator. And you know what they call Fordian lips? I mean, it, it's, it's I don't know, it, it, it looks to me that these people knew that what they were doing were illegal. Somehow they knew because the language that they use, it's, using of co-conspirator is not the language that people normally use. Like, I'm not going to say this is my co-conspirator uh, if I'm doing something that I think is illegal is right. So I think this guy's new. But it gives you an idea of the type of people who are promoting uh, uh, promoting um, Novatech. And all of these people are going to somewhat is going to have to deal with this lawsuit. Because one thing the lawyer did, which I thought was very smart, if you look at the caption of the lawsuit, they also name John Doe 1 to 500. And the reason lawyers would do that is that if they file a lawsuit and they don't know who are all the responsible parties, they don't know who all the defendants are, 
uh, and there may be other defendants that have done something, you know, uh, uh, to cause the damage. And at this point, they don't know, but eventually as they're moving to discovery, they'll find out. So they put John Doe 1 to 500. And these people you just saw in this uh, Zoom call video, these people will end up being one of the John Doe's. So uh, this is a step, I believe, in the right direction. I believe that uh, the group of investors who did that to hire this attorney to help them is actually uh, there's a very good group, a smart group of investors because they are ahead of the ball. Uh, it would have been better if they had filed this lawsuit before uh, Cynthia Pecho and her husband left town, but never, you know, it's better be late than never. And I think that um, this certainly would help some of them. Now, I know uh, many people are asking the question, am I ever going to get my money back? Since nobody will know where Cynthia Patreon is, what's going to happen? So let me let me tell you something. Uh, I believe in the power of the FBI. I believe in the uh, investigative prowess of the FBI. And I do believe that Cynthia Patreon and uh, Eddie Patreon and, and, and Ricardo Roy and Deborah Brazil and uh, Dr. Jean, uh, Martin Jean Zizi, and others, the Ciceron and her co its company, Ciceron and Associate, all of these people were promoting um, Novatech. I believe they all will get arrested eventually. They will get arrested because they all were co-conspirators. And like I've said before, when I did the video um, about Emine FX, and we talk about how the Adventist church were very instrumental in uh, making this, unfortunately, a very successful Ponzi scheme. What I mean by that is Eddie Alexson and this and the mini effects was able to raise close to over $300 million in a space of about nine months, less than nine months, seven months. So these people, okay, were as guilty as Cynthia Pétion and Eddie Pétion. And the reason I say that is that they help push this thing forward without doing the due diligence, without asking the right question. Where is the money being invested, number one? Number two, where is the license? Who's got a license? Whose license is being used? And what state are we operating on? Do we have a license to sell securities? Because what they did, basically, what Novatec did, they, they do these packages they were selling to people. They say, oh, well, you can buy a package for as little as $99. Uh, you buy those packages. And then they said, well, once you buy those packages, we'll be able, you'll be able, we'll be able to invest the money for you. You don't have to do anything. You just put your money in. You get your, your return every week, and we're going to invest it for you. Now, where is the portfolio? Okay. Where is the prospectus? Uh, and what exactly was the money supposed to be invested? Now, suddenly, Novatech said, well, the money was supposed to be invested in crypto. But did anybody, did investors have their own specific account? Were they able to see how much money they have? Were they able to see what crypto were, was purchased under their name for how much and how much it was sold and how much interest they made? None of these things happened. And Novatech was not structured that way. In fact, just like Emini FX, I will I believe that Novatec has no internal control, no structure whatsoever. What Novatec was, it was a company that was registered in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And then you've had Cynthia Petro and her husband who were controlling this. And they were taking all these people's money and in terms of cryptos, and that money was going to the company called Nova Trade in Estonia. And of course. The, the, the crypto was there. So if they need money themselves, they could certainly, um, you know, basically what they would do is they'll sell some of the crypto and get money for themselves. The problem is that as they're taking people's money, they, 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 they put it somewhere for them. They're not giving you that money back. What they wanted is you to get more people so they can use those people's money to pay you the 3%. And the people you bought in, they're supposed to get other people so that the chain could continue. But as you know, this is impossible to maintain. You can't maintain a Ponzi scheme for very long. 
because you always have to get more people. And even if you were to maintain the, the Ponzi scheme, let's say for five, six, seven years, but eventually people's gonna wanna take their money. And whenever you invest money in a company and you hear people say, oh, don't take your money, you can't take the money, look at about, look at how much money you can make by leaving the money. What they wanna do is steal your money. Obviously, the longer you get to keep your money, the more likelihood that they end up, you know, you end up with nothing, which is basically what happened here in this case. So um, I, I want to talk a little bit more about the complaint. Uh, have you seen it? I show you the complaint that was filed in the federal court in the District Court of New York uh, and the judge. Certainly you've seen the judge picture of the judge. Uh, that, that is the judge in the case. And of course, also the lawyer who filed the case uh, is in Miami. Of course, they have offices in New York. They have a, a website dedicated specifically for people to register. So if you haven't registered, you can say that the professor hasn't helped you, the professor hasn't told you, please do register uh, to be uh, a member of the class action. Now, uh, this channel is dedicated to, to that. So please, if you haven't subscribed, Maybe now you need to subscribe because uh, if you are an investor or you, you know of MNFX or Novatech, or if you just simply want to know about uh, uh, the type of Ponzi scheme dealing around crypto, uh, this is one of the best uh, channel to subscribe to. So I would be happy if you subscribe to my channel and certainly I will see you soon with another episode of Ponzi scheme. Okay, so please go to the website, sign up, and don't forget to um, to subscribe to my channel. This is the professor, and I will see you soon. Please be well.